Hello everybody, my name is Miroslav Maito and I would like to tell you something about offline mode and how you can implement it either yourself or using Google Mac. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, before I start, I would like to do a quick show of hands. How many of you have implemented a mobile web application? Okay, about a third. And how many of you have implemented a mechanism to deal with the situation when your mobile phone is not connected to the network? Even more closer. So how many of you have implemented any mechanism to deal with the situation when your network is not available? Okay, not very few of you. Oh, not very, not that many. So hopefully after my talk we will see how easy it can be done and more of you will implement it. Uh, before I start, I would like to show you, uh, show you a very quick demo of Lupe and what it is. Mateo? My assistant. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? So, I'll start with, with scaffolding a Lubeck project. That's uh, all my application of intro applications. I prepared a copy of node module so we don't have to wait for slow wiki. Now that I have my application scaffolded, I can create a model. Uh, I will use a, a hypothetic to do application in my talk, so let's scaffold a to do model. We uh, can attach it to a data source. Let's expose it through the REST API as well. And let's add some properties. So we will have a title, which is of type string, it's required. We will have completed, which is of type boolean, and it's optional, and that's it. Now I can start the server, <laughs> load up an API explorer, which is which is a which is a tool which allows you to quickly explore your REST API. And you can see that uh, within a minute you have an application which has which has all usual CRUD methods set up for you, so we can create to those, list them, etc. All the usual stuff. So that was Lubeck in action. Under the hood, Lubeck gives you uh, multiple things. The first part is data access layer, uh, providing you an object relational mapper for the, those of you remembering what Oregon used to be in uh, object-oriented languages. And we have connectors which are mapping our query language into different databases. We support SQL, NoSQL, and even, even things like REST or SOAP services. And we have also a memory database which is, which is useful when you want to run your unit tests very fast. And as we will see later, it's also useful for implementing offline, uh, offline mode. And at the bottom of the slide, you can find an example of how you can query your database and get your first then uncompleted to do items. The second part is exposing your model and your business logic through a REST API, because that's what everybody wants these days. So your model methods, which are provided by the framework, like create, find, etc., are exposed on the usual HTTP uh, verbs and methods. And you can also define your custom methods and expose them at, a, at any route you want. When you put this all together, you have a REST API, which is provided by Loopback, then you have your domain code, your domain logic implemented in models, and then you attach these models to any data source. Let's look back on the server. Now, let's look at the offline mode. There are two troubles with implementing offline mode, as I see them. The first one is that you have different tools and APIs available depending on whether you are offline or online. When you are online, you can do REST or HTTP calls to your backend, and then you have the full power of your backend available. You can do advanced queries, you can use whatever your database gives you, etc. So, for example, I included a, a simple URL query which will give you first and uncompleted to-dos. On the other hand, if you are offline, you have to use local storage or index DB. Both of them are basically a key value store. So if you want to do any advanced querying, you have to implement it yourself using array manipulations, which is tedious, and you have to repeat yourself a lot. So this is the first challenge. 
And then the second challenge is how do you actually synchronize the data, right? You have some data stored locally in your browser, you have some data in your database. How do you figure out what has been changed in the browser, what has been changed on the server in the meantime, and how to detect conflicts when both sides change the same, uh, same, same record. So the recipe, the loopback recipe is to implement single API for both offline and online mode. And actually, we have the same API for server and offline and online clients. And then the second part is synchronization, which we implemented as change replication. Let's look at these two parts in more detail. The first one was, the first task we faced was how to port loopback into browser. And it turns out it was very easy because all we need to do was to run Browserify, which basically processes your Node.js files and creates a browser bundle, which includes everything you need. And then you can do require in your client code, and it will just load the data from the bundle, load the source code from the bundle. Once we had loopback in browser, we could use the familiar concepts which we have on the server. One of them is the, con the concept of data sources and connectors, which can be used to connect to different databases or other services. So we went and extended our in-memory connector to persist data in local storage. And this way, we were able to implement the offline mode. So you have your loopback application configured to store data in the local storage in your browser. And that's it, offline mode. And the second part was to implement a connector that allows us to treat the loopback server as another database. And that way, we can have the same API for running both offline and online. In order to understand how we could build this uh, remote server as a database uh, connector, uh, we need to understand how Lubeck is, is creating the REST API. And uh, there is a bit of magic involved where we create the different REST or HTTP routes, routes based on your methods. Unfortunately, there is only so much we can do with JavaScript, so we need your help from you as a developer describe the methods, what they are accepting, what kind of arguments they are expecting, what they are returning, and possibly how they should be mapped uh, at the HTTP layer. I have an example for, for the find method, which accepts a filter, and then it returns some data, and it's mapped at slash get. Then we can use this metadata to build express routes, and we use different parts of the metadata to uh, configure different parts. So uh, we know it's a get method, this is the URL, and then we know we have a filter parameter coming from the request, and when the method is done, we will get data which should be sent as a request body. It was all specified in the metadata. And the fortunate thing is that we can use the very same metadata to build a client as well, except we have to do it the other way around. So instead of defining a server route, we do a client request. In this example, I'm using the npm module request. I can get slash to do and whatever parameters I got in the function and then process, back, process the response. And the result is quite pleasing. We have one API, which you can use in your server side Node.js code. You can use it in your browser client when it's online and when you're offline as well. Once we have this done, we needed to implement the second, or fix the second problem, which is how to synchronize data. We decided to implement a generic change replication algorithm, where we are replicating changes between two data sources. It can be your local browser and your remote server, or it can be two databases like your legacy Oracle database and your shiny new front-end MongoDB database. Uh, in order to replicate changes, we need to keep track of them to, be, to know what changes have been made. So we are maintaining change tracking records, as we call them. And basically, for every model instance, which you can see as a thing of as a database row, we maintain a checksum of the data, as, as we have last seen them, and then a checkpoint number, which is used to filter uh, change tracking records and optimize synchronization. Now, whenever you use a loopback API to create, update, or change the data. These change checking records are automatically updated for you. The, different, the difficult part is how to deal with other people using the database, right? Because 
is not only loopback application connected to your Oracle, there is also an accounting system, for example. And the idea is that you can run a manual update at the at a, at a given period, let's say every second, where you basically crawl the data and find out new records and update your uh, change checking records so you know what has been changed. And once we have these records in place, we can implement the replication algorithm itself. And what we real realize, the replication algorithm can be further simplified if we implement one-way synchronization only. So we started by implementing synchronization from browser to server, let's say, and then we, then we can use the very same algorithm to replicate the other way around, just swap the parties, so we replicate from the server back to the client. And the algorithm is, is, has five steps. We find all changes that, that have been made locally, then we compare them with changes that have been made on the server and detect any conflicts. The next step is conflict resolution, resolution which is manual, as we have already heard today, there is no way how to do that automatically. And once we have everything resolved, we can perform a bulk update. So basically the client tells the server, hey, here are the changes I need you to make in your data. And at the end, we create a new checkpoint so that next time we run the synchronization algorithm, we can synchronize only changes made after this last checkpoint. And then we run the same algorithm, switching server and client, and we have full replication done. And uh, so, so we have a we have a loopback running in the browser. We have a synchronization algorithm, and now we need to put it all together. So we have two two subclasses of our let's say to-do model. The first one is the one which we are using in the client application. It's connected to your local storage. So every changes that every change that user makes is stored in your browser and it's persisted there. Then, sort of in background, we have a second copy of the model which is connected to the loopback server and whenever, if you were using it, you would store data at the server. And the last bit is a configuration switch or setting that will enable change checking and replication between, between these two models. So in the background there is an algorithm which will periodically propagate all your changes from your local model up to the server and back. And that's it. And I have one quick demo to show you how it all works, works together. This is a simple Angular JS application based on to do MVC. So I have a to do list. There are no to dos yet. I will open another window which will simulate a different bind connected to the same app. And we have also uh, buttons which allow me to simulate the mode that I'm connected or disconnected to the network. So let's create the first to do. Let's finish this talk. <laughs> And when I synchronize the data, it's here. Let's, let's try it another. Okay, now I will show you how to create a conflict and how it's resolved. So I will disconnect from the network. Uh, actually, no. I need to create another to do. So let's get some beer. And I will sync it. Hmm. Oh, okay. Here we go. So both lines have the same items. Now I will disconnect one of them and I will make a change, get some more beer. This was synchronized to the server. This client is still offline and I will make a change. Get some less beer. Well, it's strange, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Now when I connect, a synchronization happens and we detect a conflict because locally we decided we should get some less beer, but the server decided we should get some more beer. And now the, the user has to decide what he wants to do. So it's some awesome beer. And I will use my custom version. And that's it. That's a demo. And that's all I wanted you to show. Do you have any questions?
Yep, go ahead. Uh, the synchronization can it happen in real time? Uh, the question is whether the synchronization can happen in real time. Uh, in theory, yes. Uh, at the moment, uh, no. So basically what you can do, you can set up a periodic uh, timer which will trigger the synchronization like every second. In the future, we would like to implement a WebSocket based solution which will deliver the changes in real time. Okay. Any more questions? You were stating that uh, change tracking configuration, it should be created in one format for browser, in another for server. Can that be somehow automated? And the question is whether, uh, the, I, I was, I'm mean, we are creating a change tracking record and the question was if it's possible to automate. Maybe a few slides before that you express Oh. This, this configuration and configuration. Uh, yes, this is all, this is like built dynamically. All you do is you write, you write this. Okay. You say my, my to-do model, has a remote method of find which accepts, returns something, and it should be mapped like this. And this is generated at runtime by a looper. And this is also generated at runtime by a looper. This is just an example how it works under the hood. Does it make sense? Okay, that's all. Thank you very much.